Welcome to episode six of this mini tutorial series for All the Waves 3 for people completely new to the game. This is going to be part two of the battle that we started last time. And if we pop across to the battle screen, we will see that our chase is still happening. Our armored cruisers and our protected cruisers are still chasing the Marco Polo Italian armored cruiser. Couple of things to note when you've had to save a game in mid battle and come out is that many of the settings that you put in when you left the game aren't reinstated and there's no log history. So it doesn't remember what happened last turn either. Um, the set game speed to fast is available is not engaged. Some of these uh, arrows um, around distance and stuff won't work until your first turn. Um, you probably need to remind yourself about the time. So we have five hours or 300 minutes out of the 500 minutes that allegedly we have available to this game. It could go on for longer, but if it does, it will go on into dusk and then nighttime. The Admiral Sharma and the armored cruisers are still capable of 20 knots. So they've lost a knot off their maximum speed because their stokers are beginning to tire. But if they are beginning to tire, well, that's probably true of the Marco Polo as well. The protected cruisers, their squadron max speed is 19 knots. That's because the Safax took a hit in the engine room and that knocked off three knots from its maximum speed, damaging it, but not damaging it so much that it could be detached from the formation. So they've been struggling to stay in contact. Down here are a couple of the Nino Brixio uh, protected cruisers. We could turn back to try and take that, them on. but They're likely to be faster than the Marco Polo. So our uh, best chance is to take on the Marco Polo. Now, the game you'll notice here says the Marco Polo has heavy damage and is limited to 20 knots. I doubt that. And I doubt that because its speed is unaffected. Usually when a ship has heavy damage, you will see its speed go down to 10 or even five knots. <laughs> alone uh, becoming stationary. So 20 knots, probably not. And this may well get updated after a minute two of play. Also what's come off is the lock view to division. Um, because it's a chase, it really helps if you do the lock view. There's seemingly no fire, but that may change once we uh, start going as well. So I'm gonna stay quite zoomed in. I'm gonna place my cursor uh, here to help measure whether I'm gaining or losing distance on the Marco Polo and push it forward one minute. So that was one minute. Uh, it's been hit by a six inch gun, which is good. The range at the moment is 1,722. Um, that's giving us 3.8% for the Admiral Shana itself and 1.7 for the Dupé de Lume, uh, only 0.3 for the duplex. So let's, let's not worry about the duplex too much. Uh, the Admiral Sharma is still carrying 27% damage. That's still probably a jammed rear turret. Let's uh, put the cursor back up there and see what's happening now. Uh, you can see that it's uh, weaving uh, around a bit and that often happens, that evasive maneuver, when a ship is straddled and you can see the white explosions ahead and behind the Marco Polo. So it feels like only a matter of time before we get a decent hit again. But not yet. Okay, there's a hit, but only from a three inch gun. Um, no one got really damaged by a three inch gun. If we hover now, it's still saying heavy damage. And interestingly, the speed reportedly has gone down to 15 knots. If that's true, that's excellent news. 
So as you can see, uh, we got another hit, this time by an 8-inch gun, which is nice. One of the first for them. You can see it's weaving. It doesn't seem to be losing ground particularly. Another 3-inch hit. And another. And another. So... Let's see if we can... So something seems to have happened to the Admiral Sharma itself. I'm just going to have a little look at the log. So nothing reportedly. Uh, the Y turret is back in action. So if we have a look at the whole division, it now only has 2% damage rather than the 27% uh, damage it was reported before. I'm not entirely sure why uh, the engine room hit. So... Let's bring that up again. Um, current speed 19, maximum speed 21. We might have got away from, well, uh, wrong with that, but we'll see. Now, uh, three inch hit, whereas we received a medium hit from one of its six inch guns, which went through the hull at the uh, belt extender. So the aft or uh, the bow, uh, which did penetrate. Still trying to see uh, anything good. So they've got another hit on us. If we go to the Admiral Sharma itself, we've got four medium and two light hits. Um, one flooding, which is not awful, but is something to uh, be concerned about because that might well limit our speed. Still struggling to land a knockout blow on the Marco Polo. Ooh, ooh, now, ooh, this is what we like to see. Uh, let's just broaden this out a little bit. So, two eight-inch guns, one hit, four six-inch guns, one hit, three three-inch guns, two hits, uh, six three-inch guns, another two hits, um, and a straddle by the uh, Dupe de Lorme. So it won't have enjoyed that. Still reporting heavy damage. So I'm kind of hopeful that what we're seeing is a large amount of superstructure damage on the uh, Marco Polo. I'm just going to have a look again on the Marco Polo its speed says it's still 21 knots. The flooding is still one. Mm -hmm. Not thrilled with that, but that's okay. The range is 1,200. In fact, if we put the uh, torpedo on, you can see we are just within torpedo range. Now, this is important because we don't have a torpedo fire solution on the Marco Polo, but the Marco Polo probably has one on us. So we either need to broaden out the range or accept the fact that we might be torpedoed. So let's just open this out ever so slightly because I think that's a bit of a risk that we don't need to take. Oh, and it's turned away, which is a nice thing. So let's join it in that turn. You can see how we're turning together. So that at least isn't masking uh, us. The protected cruisers are now doing 18 knots, which, you know, is not brilliant. But there you go. The range is now... Oops, 5,600 from the protected cruisers and just a smidge under 2,000 yards from the um, armoured cruisers. So we just took a, another hit on the bow of the Admiral Sharma. Okay, so that seems to have slowed it down quite a bit. I'm heading straight for it, so that's now 1,500 yards. I'm going directly behind because 
that then is a relatively safe angle for not being attacked by torpedoes. And hopefully we will get some hits against it. We're now down to a thousand yards. So this is looking good. We've, ooh, uh, or the, um, the Pay de Loom has uh, detached. Um, it's got one light hit, which is causing it to, um, to flooding. I'm not entirely sure that's very helpful, but there you go. Uh, the flooding here has gone up to two, and actually you can see some flotation damage there. I'm, I'm not thrilled by that. Um, the Dupé de Lume did hit it three times with six inch guns. So that's good. Um, you'll notice now it's saying light damage, heavy damage. When was that? So these damage reports can be very flaky. So I'm possibly going to have to call off the chase in order to bring down this damage that's going on, which of course would be a shame. But there you go. So our max is 18 now. Uh, here the max is 21. So actually the Dupé de Lume may well overtake it once it scores some hits. Okay, there's some hits on the Dupé de Lume uh, and on the Admiral Sharma. So, you know, the Marco Polo is putting up a great fight. <laughs> it is the nature of... 1890s fighting they are slugfests um and you kind of have to wait until something really bad happens like critical hit rudder damage oh um obviously bad happened to them not not to you i think we have to brace ourselves that this overwhelming of the marco polo might not go well the critical hits on the admiral shana Usually when the rudder is hit, they go round in circles until they get it fixed. Um, and it's entirely likely that um, the Marco Polo may um, get away. So you can see the Admiral Sharma quickly falling behind. At least it's not turning in circles. Okay, its speed has dropped to 14. If I go to the order of battle, it now has two asterisks, so I can detach it meaning that the uh, duplex itself um, with a speed of 20 can crank up that speed and continue the chase whilst the uh, Dupé de Lume also gives chase but as you can see we're all a bit not in an optimal place I just bring the protected cruisers their maximum is currently 18 the, the couple of Italian light cruisers are ch uh, chasing so we'll just see what that, what that brings. I'm going to put the Admiral Sharma onto my control, and I'm going to bring the speed down to 10 to see if we can't stop that flooding. And ditto here, you see 10 flooding. See how it's grown? You can't drive ships around at peak flooding um, and then... Um, have them not flood more. So take that to cruise and then take that to 10, which is an awful shame because it was uh, doing well. So this is just leaving the duplex in chasing mode, which is most unfortunate. Uh, let's go back here. Yeah, flooding 10, not loving that. Flooding two. Flooding two sounds little, but over time it can, you know, really be damaging. So, two uh, armoured cruisers inconvenienced. Um, okay. We're just wondering if there's any fire damage there. It does look, yes, as if it's on fire. So, let's crack on and uh, see if we can't overpower it. Uh, these are still shooting, although I doubt that... Um, they will be in a good position. I'll check there. Well, oh, it's uh, reattached itself. I was going to say we'll check its uh, speed. Okay, so the flooding's gone down to zero. So pushing it down to 10 for a little while has stopped that. 
It can actually go at 21. Current speed is 11, so they'll, they'll have to speed up a little bit. Over here, the flooding is still at 2, and as you can see, it's quite a bit of flooding. So uh, let's not give up hope. Admiral Sharma misunderstood signals. Well, they do that all the time. So we have the Marco Polo in our sights. Let's just hope that it can get decently damaged. Certainly the range has gone down to a mere uh, 2,000 yards, which is my kind of range. It's still reporting as being on fire, which is a good thing. If there's a fire for long enough, the superstructure will burn down and the crew will have to abandon the ship because it will become uncontrollable, which is fine. Lots of straddling. Uh, less hits. Okay, there's one from an 8-inch gun. That's, that's going to help. And I do believe it is slowing. Yep. I'm just going to get behind it so that we don't get into trouble with its torpedo tubes. But now we're getting very close. And says it's 15 knots. The Dupe de Lume needs to clean grates. So as you shovel coal more and more into the furnaces, they get full of clinker and they need to be cleaned. So uh, that's what that message means. It will restrict the speed, but luckily the Marco Polo is... So after giving up hope, we may have hope that we've finally got it. Yeah, it's not looking very healthy at all. And this is classic. This is in the nature of a good rule of waves battle. Just when you think it's all gone to pot, uh, victory can be uh, claimed from the jaws of defeat. Whilst it's bow on to me, I'm happy to move closer to the broadside. Let's just move in a little bit so the range doesn't get too much. I'll hit on the duplex, but we will continue to pound. I don't think we are at risk of a torpedo. Well, we're not, because that's the torpedo range, so staying just outside that circle is ideal. Oops, what are these chaps doing? Okay, they're coming up as well. And I think for, well, let's have a look how the poor old Admiral is doing. Still at flooding two. So I'm going to take this down, stop, and just see if that allows the damage control parties to get on top of things. Um, one of the things with the good old Admiral is that their crew quality is zero, whereas uh, if I go to, say, the duplex, oh, its crew quality is even worse, whereas I think for the... Um, Protected clues, yes, it's one. So having a middling crew quality will impact the damage control procedures. Still 18 knots max for the protected cruisers, but now that the Marco Polo has slowed and is weaving around, uh, I suspect that they will eventually catch things up. Now, the Marco Polo has gone to zero, and the trouble with that is that once it's under AI control, the AI can go around running it. Flooding is still at two, and it's zoomed up to 15 knots, which is, you know, not really what I wanted. Where is Taranto? Okay, Taranto is not far. If we click here, Taranto is only 30,000 yards away. So ideally, we might want to head off um, and block. There we go. And then get ahead. Safe uh, from torpedo attacks. 
and then bring the protected cruisers. They can go back into line ahead. So I'm taking off the turn together so that they form a nice line. And here we are. Um, so we did lose a bit of range in that maneuver, but we have stopped the Marco Polo from being able to withdraw into Taranto, sealing its fate. Hopefully. Yep. Now, this is how I like to finish off ships. If you can get ships on both quarters, then there's really nowhere for them to go. Um, I might put in the flotilla attack, which brings up the black flag, which gives these people permission to launch torpedoes if they get into a torpedo firing solution which they may well do. I'm hoping that, um, oh, it's taking plenty of hits now, that the Marco Polo's own torpedoes uh, is probably out of action. At least that's the hope. Oh, look at it come. Uh, and let's bring this down here. It's probably going to try and go through the line. Might have a collision. Might have to turn and turn together like that, and then that, and then this, reversing ourselves. Um, particularly as um, I'm going to turn sharply now, and these guys, I'm going to take the turn together line, which is going to make these. Uh, wander around a bit as they uh, snuck in behind the suffix. So all a bit untidy, but that's okay. Uh, all of this turning doesn't do the fire control any good. So the Marco Polo speed is now uh, five knots. So I'm going to bring it down to cruise just so that we are not constantly overshooting the Marco Polo and can really focus in on our gunnery. If I have a look at the division, 3% um, isn't great for how close we are um, and poor on the protected cruisers, so they need to go still. I don't know why the Safax isn't shooting. Let's just have a little look, see at the log, see if there's anything um okay so they did have their forward turret jammed um you get a whole load of jamming in uh in the early phase so the duplex is going to spin round and round and round and then the protected cruisers are going to start turning as well um, we're going to get into this kind of circle of death thing until um, the Marco Polo has the decency to uh, sink. And you can see here, a hit from six inch, two hits from six inch, a couple of uh, two inch hits, um, and a, another hit from a six inch. So um, yeah, these are registering and more. So hopefully this is going to sort itself out. If I take the lock off, it should be obvious whether actually the Marco Polo is moving at all. No, it's not. And uh, look at that. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, lots of lovely six inch hits from the Safax and the Taj and the Amaral Cecile. So good show. Give that one more. Bang, bang, bang. Let's start to turn. Let's uh, take the turn together off from the uh, duplex and start to turn that one so that it recovers the formation. Um, down here, the old Admiral is doing its own thing. Uh, current speed 10 knots. Okay, happy with that. Flooding still two. Not happy with that. So um, my hunch is that the Marco Polo is done for. Um, it's rare 
for a ship to recover once it's stationary. Uh, it's firing at these light cruisers. And yep, pepper that a little bit more and a little bit more. Time to check the time. We've got two hours left, so that's not awful. Um, the remaining protected cruisers are departing and they are leaving the good old um, Admiral Shana alone and setting the speed back to zero to try and cure this flooding, which I'm still not happy about. And I'm going to take uh, the Admiral Shana down towards, sorry, the duplex down towards the Admiral Shana. Mainly so that um, we can all form up. The protected cruisers will just do one more pass at the flaming wreck of the Marco Polo. You can see how much ammunition we've had to plow into the Marco Polo uh, from six ships to get this result. You can also see, I mean, the range is, you know, under a thousand yards and we're still, you know, only getting ones and twosy hits. Um, I mean, good hits and everything, but nothing to, uh, to write home about. And you can see what I mean about the torpedoes, even though we're only going 12 knots uh, and passing this ship in a nice straight line, well within torpedo range, no one has yet fired an actual torpedo. Let's see if they do it on this run-in. It would be nice if it was like a little coup de grace. Okay. So just check the Admiral Shana. Still two. So we will just move towards them and just see if we get a torpedo. And we get a torpedo. Boom. That's definitely it. Three dreadnought ships and iron uh, clads have zero torpedo protection. And uh, when they take a torpedo, that is very much good night, Vienna. So we'll say goodbye to the Marco Polo, a, um, a valuable and valiant opponent. And then there's another torpedo. Yep. Uh, do we want to pick up survivors? Yeah, why not? And so we're done. I'm going to set the Admiral Shana to five knots. I'm going to set the Armored Cruisers to five knots, just so that they stay all together. Once the uh, Armored Cruisers, I'm sorry, once the Protected Cruisers have picked up survivors and stuff, I will run them down so that they um, all form up. Let's put that um, under AI control. And bring them all together. This is five. That can now go to, uh, we'll make that into AI controlled and we will make it into a screen. And for the screen, we will send it into a screen formation. And that should just put it uh, ahead. Off they go, a bit of screening. The Admiral Cecile will join up with them shortly. We look at the Admiral Shana. Still at two. You can see how it's just creeping up. So still not thrilled with that. Um, technically, there's a possibility that we could lose it. There's dusk and uh, here is night time. So we did use all the time. You'll notice we did fail in the objective. The objective was to sink two ships, but you know, I can live with that. No opposing ships in sight. Uh, and we've reached 500 minutes. So let's okay that. And here we go. So it's a victory to France. That's the most important thing. 
Um, we have one undamaged armored cruiser, one light damage, and one medium damage without flooding. Uh, and our protected cruisers are fine. They lost their only armored cruiser. Um, if we go and have a little, little look at that, down here there are air details. Don't have to worry about that. And here are the tables for the air losses. Um, if we look at the ship details, you get this. And we can see that the uh, it was actually the name ship of the class, the Marco Polo itself. It took uh, only one torpedo. Remember, it was reported that two torpedoes hit. So you can't trust them. A mere 82 medium hits and 41 light hits. Uh, oh, and two torpedo hits. It fired a torpedo. So that's what that was. It, um, we can go look at it in detail. It used 78% of its ammo and it received 5,000 damage points. So let's have a look here. Well, you can see it lost all of its flotation and its superstructure was completely wrecked. If we look at the log entry, you get uh, this listing here, which lists all the various uh, hits on it and that it's generated itself. Sometimes I pop these into a spreadsheet and use conditional formatting to color code them so it's easier to read. Uh, it contains all the details. For example, here it says that the torpedo tube was reloaded, so it did launch a torpedo at some point, but uh, didn't uh, do anything nasty. And you can see at this point, fire spreads and then it spreads a bit more. Um, they managed to limit their flooding, but the fire spread again and then again, just at the low level. Uh, fire reduced by damage control, but then spreading again and again with uh, more hits. Um, and then up to number nine. So as you can see, and then here at 311, fires raging out of control, chip abandoned. Um, now, it's actually um, quite a bit after that. So all of these marked with the two uh, pound signs are after the ship is lost. So you can see we hit it and hit it and hit it. Oh boy, we hit it so much. <laughs> and all of this was superfluous because it, um, so a full hour of um, hitting, including these final two torpedoes, uh, were just, you know, for extra measure. You can't tell. As I say, usually when a ship stops, that's a very bad sign. Um, but uh, you can't always tell if it's lost. So that's, close that down. That, that's a victory for France. They scored 1,500 points. We scored... 5,300 points, so we'll have that. Let's close it and close down the battle. Go to zoom. And there we are. We get 460 victory points, they get 178. We'll have that. Uh, this, at the end of every month, you get a trade warfare summary. There's no trade warfare going on at the moment, so we can close that. And then the usual uh, news. So that's all fine. And there you go. There's your first battle. Chases do to tend to take a while. You could see how intricate that was. I could have lost one or two of my armored cruisers. They certainly sustained damage. My protected cruisers sustained damage, which meant that it slowed down. Had that not happened, had I been able to keep all six ships attacking the Marco Polo, its end would have come sooner. But even when its end came and fires made them abandon ship, it wasn't clear that that had happened. And I continued to blow it up for another hour of shooting. Um, better safe than sorry when it comes to these things. If we just go to the map and we zoom in to the Mediterranean, I'm just curious what that's done to the blockade strength. So we now have 
54 and Italy has 57. So we've both reduced. They've reduced because they've lost a ship and one of their protected cruisers is in repair. Um, we equally have two ships in repair. Once those come out of repair, our uh, numbers will go up and that might put us above the Italians allowing us to blockade. If not, we'll just have to have one more battle. And that's sort of it for this mini tutorial. You've seen how to orientate yourself around a brand new navy and decide what's what. You've seen us go through the progress of each month responding to diplomatic and military initiatives and the discovery of new research. You've seen us uh, design a new battleship and wait for that to roll out in 12 months time. And you've seen us go to war, almost fight an exciting convoy battle that the other side declined, and then fight a classic chasing engagement where we ran down and hammered to death an Italian armored cruiser. If you can do all those things when the game is released on the 18th of May, you can have a whole pile of fun. Do check out my earlier Rule the Waves 2 guides. There's all sorts of technical guides on ship design, on fleet tactics. They're all very, very largely true, particularly for this early pre-Dreadnought and Dreadnought era. The biggest changes to the game are post-1945 or 55. Um, so that's still all valid. I, I probably will go through and update a number of them, but for the moment, they're 95 or more percent accurate. So check them out for a more detailed, a more technical, or a more tactical view on how to play this wonderful game. Thanks for watching this mini series and goodbye for now.